are stupid. I don't know how you hey, yo, 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 What the f is wrong with you people? Sir, I'm gonna tell you the Get the f out of here! Sir, I'm gonna get out of here! Sir. You officer Horton, you piece of crazy. Who are you? I'm in drunk. Huh? I'm drunk. In a small town, there's a guy named Justin. He's narrating a story about a police officer named Augustine. Augustine had a mishap with his police car. Augie. You, he needs to. Yeah, Augie, come here. What? Let's go out here in the garage. Uh, we got to put your weapons away. Come out here, we'll talk. You'll be all right. Um, the, uh, the car's just being taken to Lumpkins. What's going on in there? They're in a garage and Justin tells Augustine to put away his weapons. The police cars are all damaged, and Justin wonders what's happening. Huh? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Uh, we gotta put your weapons away. Yeah. You're not... Um... Here, let me have a second to unload it. Just need to unload it. What am I doing? We got, uh, oh, sorry, when you towed away vehicle, here, go in here, so we can put this way. Augustine seems confused, and Justin helps him remove his police gear. Justin explains that when you wreck a police car, you have to get checked for drugs and alcohol. They start taking off Augustine's equipment. When you total a vehicle, you got to go down for a, a drug and alcohol assessment, and everybody that wrecks a cruiser that totals it uh, has to go down there. So what we do is just take your taser off of you, and... Uh, you have any backup weapons on your hand? Uh, drop your vest or your uh, duty belt because you don't need that. We're going to go down to a drug and alcohol test down at the hospital, you and I. And uh, you don't need all your gear. So take your. Uh, are you all right, Augie? Yeah. You seem. Oh, you, your focus seems divided on me. What's going on? You just nervous? Yeah. Okay. You're, are you under the influence of anything, Augie? No, good. I hope not. I, I do. Where's your vest at? You don't have it on you? Okay. All right. What else do you got on you? you got I'm done. Pocket knife, huh? I'm done. What's going on, though? Tell me what's I'm going done. on, bud. I'm done. Trust what do you mean you're done? Back. Justin is concerned that Augustine might be under the influence of something. Augustine refuses to take the test and says he's done. Justin insists on helping him, but Augustine is stubborn. Are you going to go with me to take the test, on you? You're refusing it? You don't want to do that. I'm done. Okay, so what does that mean? All right. Are you under the influence of something? Are you? What's wrong with you right now? I don't understand. I'm that. done. Okay. Are you going with me? No. So you're. What are you going to do? I'm going home. Can you call somebody? Come get you. I don't need to. Well, I, I'm not going to let you drive. Yeah. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. What? What? I'm not going to let you drive. Can you call your wife? <laughs> Seriously, Augie, can you call your wife? I drive by. They have a heated discussion, and Augustine eventually admits he's been drinking. Like that. I know, it's not the end of the world. We can do this, Augie. If you just go down and take the test like we're asking you, if you do that, then we can at least get that clear to where you can come back to work. Seriously, Augie, I'm trying to help you, bud. Huh? What'd you say? I don't want to... What'd you say? What do you mean you're... Alcohol? Pills? What are you talking about? Huh? Okay. All right. Okay, it's just an accident. Troy 421. Okay. The what do I do? Huh? The what do I do? What do you mean, what do you do? What do you do? If it's just an accident, what do I do? You hit, you hit a semi-trailer. So, again, as part of our policy, we have to go down with that and go take the test. If everything comes back okay, then... That's great. It helps you. It benefits you. I'm been drunk. Huh? I'm drunk. You're drunk right now? No, I've been drunk. Been drunk when? Today? Yeah. Okay. So you don't think you are now? No. In the end, Augustine's mistake might cost him his job, but Justin just wants to ensure his safety. In a quiet town, a tense situation unfolds between the mayor and a police officer. The scene centers on a heavily intoxicated individual causing a ruckus near a car. The cop had arrested this unruly person the previous day, also for public intoxication. 
the mayor insists on reviewing security camera footage to confirm the drunk man's actions. He's drunk as hell. Could you watch him on my passenger side, make sure you don't try and kick out my window or something? Yeah. Thanks. I just arrested him yesterday. He was drunk yesterday, too. Was he? That's what he was saying, but I need to review the camera. She stated he did come in, so as long as I can see it, yeah. I'm going to take him. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, guy, he's drunk. I need to see the camera. Huh? Just a drunk guy. It's My cool. cameras are for you guys. No. Okay. Ever. Ever. Okay. Okay. So. These are private cameras. Right. So. Okay. I want it in writing that you even requested that. Okay. I can give it to you, William, in writing. That's fine. I mean. You're done, dude. I'll tell you right now. I'm f***ing with your ass. Okay, dude. No. Not no, okay, dude. Nothing. I've had it. The officer seems reluctant, expressing concerns about constant surveillance and its impact on local businesses, particularly a nearby liquor store. The two engage in a back and forth discussion. No, we don't do that. Okay, okay so what I got. What are you doing here in this parking lot? Your lady called me and said that you got a drunk guy here getting ready to leave. So to keep a guy from getting on the road, come down here. Found him, he's drunk. So keep him from getting in the vehicle. I'm asking to see if I can see the cameras to prove that he drove up here. No. No. We're not doing that. I would never do that for any citizen. These are private cameras, okay? I'm not with people getting watched all the time or any of that stuff. And you sit across the road over here for a day for an hour and fifteen minutes watching my place. As a business I'm not watching, but I'm running traffic. He's even asked owner. me to do said thing. Go watch traffic. As a business owner, nobody's gonna come buy anything from the liquor store for the top seven. Okay. All right. okay. As tensions escalate, the mayor accuses the cop of falsehoods regarding a call, demanding that the officer leave the premises. The mayor asserts that police presence is detrimental to the liquor store's business. The cop is sternly warned to refrain from returning to the location. You're a liar. You said she called the cops and she did not call the cops. I did not call the cops. Okay, somebody... So you're a liar! Oh, Sir, I'm going to tell you the cop... Sir, I'm you get out of here! Sir, go! Stop! Sir, stop! Get the out of here! Sir, I'm sick of you! Sir, you lied about that. You, you lied! I didn't lie about nothing. She Somebody did! Call you. You. Up. you said she called. You okay. just said that. She you called. Said, Somebody called. You need to leave get here. Get the out of here! Don't no, no, ever pull back on this parking lot again. You I told to you that for one business. I'm telling you with this one. I'm telling you as a business owner, politely, you All need right. to leave. This confrontation illustrates a power struggle between local authorities and the town's parking lot. In a peaceful neighborhood, a man confidently walks along the sidewalk, openly carrying a firearm. A police officer approaches, seeking to identify him. The man, who prefers to be called Good Citizen, refuses to answer questions or provide his name. Can you identify yourself? What was that? Name and badge number, please. Name and badge number, please. Officer Barton here, Office Police Department. What can I do for you? I don't consent you to walk any further. What was that? I do not consent you to walk any further. Okay. You got a gun? I'm open carrying today, yes. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I was just here because somebody called you guys in suspicious. I'm just walking around exercising my first and second amendment rights. Okay. All right, yeah, ma'am. That's you got. What's your name, man? I don't answer questions. Could you please identify yourself again, please? Officer Barzanier. Badge number, please. Six nine seven three. Thank you. Yeah, so, yeah, that's, somebody thought you guys were suspicious, you know, so, none major, okay? Nothing major at all, I have no ill will, no bad intentions towards anybody. Okay, okay, do, do you have a, that's cool. yeah, what, what's your name, man? I don't answer questions, you can call me Good Citizen. Good Citizen, okay, okay. Or you live here? I don't answer questions. Why is that? 
So I'm not legally obliged to answer any questions. Okay. The officer persists, citing a suspicious call that led them to this encounter. The man questions whether suspicion alone is a misdemeanor or felony, pointing out that he is not obligated to identify himself unless he has committed a crime. What's okay. your name, buddy? You can call me good citizen, sir, or boss man. No, I won't call you either of those. You realize you have to identify yourself to a police officer? Have I committed a crime today? You have to identify yourself to a police officer. Have I committed a crime? I'm not required. Your identification, yeah, you are committing a crime. So, under what suspicion? What's your RAS? We were called out for a suspicious call. That's what right, is suspicion a misdemeanor or a felony? You have to identify yourself to me on these calls, okay? I'm not required to identify myself unless I've, co unless I've committed a crime. Identify yourself, you are required by law if we ask to identify yourself. So you don't look towards your gun? No, I'm uh, making sure we're six feet apart. I won't look down, I won't move my hands. My hands are up here. Yeah, I see your hands. They're gonna okay. stay there. Yes, sir. The officer tries to engage in further conversation, asking about the man's actions, but he remains silent on the matter. The man emphasizes his right to privacy and questions whether the officer took an oath to defend the Constitution. Did you swear an oath to defend the Constitution when you took okay. your job? What was the original complaint? Suspicious, two suspicious males with a camera okay. wearing all black, so that's all I got. All black's just a color. Okay. Were you on the sidewalk? Yes, sir. Did you try to go into buildings? No, sir. Were you just walking? Yes, sir. Okay, you didn't yell at anybody? Nothing I didn't say anything to anybody. Okay. Who called this in? No clue. No clue? Okay. I was just dispatched. Where was he at when you approached? They were right here. Okay. You sent another guy? Yeah. He locked the door. Uh, I believe this is a okay. duplex or apartment. Okay. I'll tell you. I'll, I'll we'll explain. Leave our job here is done. Yes, sir. So. Eventually, the officer relents, providing his name and badge number. Thank you. Could I have your name and badge number, please? Yeah, Officer Vance, 75. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Take care. Yep, you guys have a great day. The encounter ends on a civil note, and the man continues his walk, confident in his knowledge of his rights and the importance of preserving them. In a bustling streets, we find an officer growing quite upset. His emotions flare, and he shouts while waving his arms wildly. Unfortunately, the officer's anger is misplaced as the guy nearby hasn't done anything wrong. The officer, still agitated, is told that he's dismissed, but he insists on questioning the man. The man calmly asserts his right to film in public, but the officer remains confrontational, demanding answers to his questions. No. You need anything? Nope, you're dismissed. Dismissed? Yep. Actually, that's not how it works, but... Am I, I committing a crime? No, but I'd like to know if you need I'd like to not answer your questions. You're dismissed. Why are you taking that? Because I'm allowed to film in public. You are allowed to film in Cool. You're dismissed. I'm just sure that you need I don't need anything from you. Okay. Well, just do us a favor. Don't interfere with our investigation. I'm not interfering. You don't need to tell me that. Man, you're nice. I appreciate you. Cool. You're dismissed. Yep. That's it. Bet you've never been told that. Away from the car. Excuse Get me. Away from the car. Excuse me. I'm not doing anything wrong, man. You can't just walk up on a police I can absolutely. Investigation. I know the law better than you, don't no, I? You don't Interesting. Like you. I'm 10 feet away. I'm 10. You were close. What law am I breaking? I don't know you. Tell me what law I'm breaking, officer. Are you coming to let this dude out of the car? Can you tell me what law I'm breaking? Are you coming to let this dude out of the car? I don't have to answer your questions. I don't have to answer your questions. Right up to that car. This is textbook, dude. I don't have to answer your questions. You're just educating my 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 friends here. That's all. However, the man knows his rights and refuses to engage in the officer's game. As the encounter continues, the officer's anger gets the best of him. He threatens the man with charges of obstruction, but can't specify any actual law that was broken. Well, what you can't do is you can't interfere with our investigation. Okay. This is what I'm going to tell you. If you'd like to video, I would like you against the wall. Because I'm going to let you know right now. Here's good. To right here. Here's fine. And this is where my prisoner is. You want to see him? Okay, here here's he is. One. There's a prisoner back Are you okay? So it sure looked like you were coming to let him out of the car. You're getting a complaint on you, dude. You need you to step back. You go right ahead. I haven't violated I've been any of your rights. I haven't violated any Not of your laws. One. But you sure are oh, man. really taking me away from my You sound like feelings enforcement right now. You're law feelings enforcement, dude. Enforcement? Yeah, you yeah. Walk up yeah. to the cruiser to maybe let What law did I break? Out? What law did I break? Dude. I'm just telling you right now, don't do that again or you will be the What law did I break? I'm telling you, do you understand? If you what law did I break? Cruiser, there are Educate the public. Educate the public. What law did I break? 
I don't know you. You don't know what law I broke. I don't know Because there wasn't you. one. So if you... Can you leave me alone? I'm just filming. Can you leave me alone? Instruction. Can you it's leave me alone? Spell. It's not. It's, it's not. It's, it's, no, no, actually, it's, 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 it's 10 feet away, dude. It's 10 feet away. All I need is eight, and there's ten feet. All I need is eight. I know the law, man. I know the law. Don't do it. You don't have to let me know anything. Don't do it. I can do what I was doing. I was ten feet away, and you still can't name a law I broke. Can you, law enforcement? You can't name a law. You're real mad. You're big mad right now. Throwing your arms in the air. Yeah. 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 Obstruction. Say it again. Say it again. I'm still not under arrest, am I? Interesting. Frustrated. The man asserts his rights once more, telling the officer that he doesn't have power over a law-abiding citizen. Because, I'm telling you that because you don't have power over a law-abiding citizen. You're dismissed. Dismissed. dismissed is something you haven't heard from a citizen. Congratulations, you heard it today. Your partner's smart. He's sitting in his car and he kept his mouth shut. I'm doing a great job. <laughs> in the end, the officer's partner wisely remains quiet while the man continues to assert his rights and educate his friends on their rights as well. This two cops in Alberta, Canada. They pulled over a man who owned a car with dealer plates. The man tried to explain that he used the car for both personal use and to promote sales, but the cops were not convinced. The man showed them a document from 2011 that discussed changes in operating licenses and vehicle regulations. It mentioned that dealer plates could be used for promotion of sales by the holder of the dealer certificate. This is uh, dated actually from 2011, but it's yep. important changes to operating licensing and vehicle control regulations regarding the use of dealer plates in Alberta. And there's all the subsections and everything. But um, let me just turn up my screen. Here. Um. It will be repealed and substituted with the following for the purpose of subsection 1B used in promotion of sales by the holder of the dealer certificate or agent includes personal use of the vehicle by the holder of the dealer certificate of registration. Wait, wait, read that first line again. It's okay. being repealed with this. The cops seemed unsure and asked for clarification. They debated back and forth with the man providing contradicting statements. No tickets were issued, but the cops were finally handed a copy of the Alberta Traffic Safety Act by the citizen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but what was the first line again? For the purpose of subsection 1, subsection B, used in the promotion, promotion of, sales. of sales. Yeah, this is promotion you, of sales. You told us you're driving it from home to yeah, work. But promotion of sales, I also like meet up with people, people see me in exactly. traffic. One exactly. guy that passed me knows me, follows me on Instagram. So it is promotion of sales. I sell high, and I'm not arguing with you guys. I but sell you, high. You see where we're coming from, yes, right? okay. but it is both kind of sides, not, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I'm not. I'm not arguing with you right. that there is. There, for sure, is a business yeah. aspect of that. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think anyone's. We're not saying that you're not allowed to be driving yeah. a vehicle. I'm just saying there's a weird gray area in there. For sure. Where yeah. We, we have a duty yeah. to invest. No, of course. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not giving you guys a hard time. Believe me. Like I know police get a hard enough time as oh, it yeah. is, and I want to be make it as easy and oh, transparent yeah. for you guys. But it does say like a family member of the holder of the uh, yeah, employee, like, the holder of the employee. Like, agent. I just I just want to see it so I can learn myself. <laughs> They discussed cases where people had been fined for similar situations. In the end, they agreed that enforcing the law could be tricky, and the man appreciated the conversation, despite the frustration of dealing with the police so many times. And if you want, like, if you give me your card, I can email you the actual document. No, I, I, got, I, got, I got it here. Yeah, okay, so, cool. So the other thing, too, like, uh, you can tell with your vehicle, like, you have one bag that you're clearly going to work with, there's yeah. nothing else in it. I pulled a guy over, same thing, he's like, yeah, yeah my dad's a owns a dealership. Yeah. He had all of his stuff in the car. Yeah. He had stuff hanging from the mirror. Like it was clearly a personal sure, thing. Yeah. And I used that as evidence to go to court. Yeah. He charged him as an uninsured driver and yeah. he got found guilty and doesn't yeah. and he got a three thousand dollar fine, right? Wow. So I'm like I'm not saying that we can't enforce that yeah. either, right? It is an enforceable offense still. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not without a doubt in my mind you're driving the vehicle legally. Yeah. I'm not saying that. And I just wanted you to make sure like I know I know you're obviously frustrated with Having to deal with us so many times, but ah, no, I appreciate chatting with you guys. Street, and the area, yeah. you know, let's you drive around with it, right? So, yeah. It's all good, man. All right, buddy. Have all right, day, cool. Man. Have a good day, guys. Thank you. They parted ways, hoping for a better day ahead. In a recent incident at a Nassau County government building, an auditor attempted to enter without presenting identification, but was denied entry. The auditor, who identified as a journalist, sought to conduct business through a Freedom of Information Act request. 
Yeah, so I'm basically, I wanted to speak with you because I'm being trespassed from this building. Okay. I'm trying to conduct business. I'm a journalist. I'm trying to conduct business here by doing a Freedom of Information Act request. Okay. Authorities insisted on the need for a government-issued ID, citing policy. The auditor protested, claiming this policy was unconstitutional. Eventually, a sergeant arrived and supported the auditor's rights, allowing them to proceed after passing through security. So they're saying if you show them government ID, I would be able to clerk? correct. That's what they're saying, and that's and what I'm saying is that's unconstitutional. Okay. And I understand we might have difference of opinion, but the, the reason why I'm here today is to challenge that unconstitutional uh, policy and that has the so authorization. Is there certain parts of the building you're not allowed to go. Or you're just no, just you're not allowed to go into the all. into the building at all without a government issued ID. All right, I'm gonna go speak to them with anything you need. You just gotta go through the security thing, and uh, okay. you're welcome to go in there. All right, All thanks, right. Sergeant. Come on in. Appreciate it. Inside, they approached Joanne, the county clerk, and explained their intention to make a FOIL request. Joanne welcomed their request. Plus, it's a little warm in here. Thank you. Where's the uh, city clerk? I mean, the county clerk. They're gonna help you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Hi, sir. Hi. How can I help you? Hi. What was your name? Joanne. Joanne. Nice to meet you. Joanne. Nice to meet you. What can um, we help you with today? I just wanted to do a uh, FOIL request. Exercising your constitutional rights. I think that's awesome. Correct. Thanks, man. Appreciate it, Sergeant. The auditor expressed gratitude for the support and understanding shown by the sergeant, making their visit a successful one. In a quiet town. A man named Jack is once again pulled over by the police. They claim his car matches the description of a vehicle involved in suspicious activities, a situation he's grown tired of. The officer explains that they've received reports of a similar vehicle being linked to illegal activities in the area. Here we go again. So I guess so. Drugs in this area. Right, what you need to do is take me off the AFPR registration because it's the fifth time this month I've pulled me over. It's bad, man. No, I am not. I work with the police. Yeah, so you're in a mood. Jack, aware of his rights, firmly asserts that he won't allow a vehicle search without valid suspicion. The officer attempts the I can smell cannabis trick, but Jack counters with his Australian and UK licenses, indicating his innocence. Can you explain why you pulled me over? That's not okay with me. I do not consent to you searching my vehicle. Unless you have due suspicion that I'm carrying legal or illicit subject uh, possessions, then you do not have the right to say that I'm <laughs> Oh, we're pulling the old I can smell cannabis to a cow. I have my Australian license and my UK license. Jack then reminds the officer of the law, specifically section 163 and 164 of the Royal Traffic Act, stressing the need for evidence to search his car. Do you understand the law at all? Officer. I don't need to prove anything to you. You've got my details there. Are you detaining me before I am free to go? Well, we'd like to have a look around these people, if you may. Are you arresting me, officer? I'm not arresting you at the moment, but we, uh, we have our suspicions, and we'd like to have a look around the What suspicions do you have? As I say, it's just a What suspicions do you have? 
Okay, under the section 163 of the Road Traffic Act, you are allowed to stop me. Under section 164, you are not allowed to search my vehicle unless you've got evidence that I'm carrying something illegal. Evidence. Well, Where's the evidence? Carry evidence? So you can always carry the vehicle with it. That's, uh, that's an argument that I'm not willing to go into. Frustrated and unwilling to continue the argument, Jack asks if he's free to go and warns of possible legal consequences if these unjust stops persist. Am I free to go? What checks are you doing? Okay, you realise I've been, uh, I've, I've issued your police department with a section 10. You need to take my vehicle registration off your ANPR. If this carries on, I will be suing for compensation for stress and undue time delay. Okay. This has happened over and over again, no with no fair explanation why I pulled over. Okay. We'll Driving away. Jack hopes this will be the last time he faces an unwarranted police stop. Officer Christopher Dickey finds himself in an unexpected situation. He's missing out on a day of celebration because he didn't get the memo. He approaches a group of gentlemen and kindly asks them to lower something they're holding. But things take a turn as Officer Dickey informs them they're trespassing on private property owned by the Adams County government. I didn't get the memo on it. No! I thought I would have gotten like a calendar invite or something. Well, it's every day. Would you mind just lowering that for me? No. Would you mind lowering it for me? I don't want it used as a weapon against me, okay? No, I'm not going to use it as a would weapon. Would you please lower it down you for would me? Do well to stay clear of me. Okay. You don't have to worry about me. Gentlemen, we need to talk for a minute, okay? I'm Here's the thing. Crime? Yes, you are. Which crime specifically? Tre trespass trespassing. Trespassing. Okay. You have been asked to leave the property, okay? Right so now, I'm you are trespassing. So Perfectly. It's not a awesome. I Let totally me appreciate that. You that this is public property. Actually, this is private property that you're on oh, right it now. Is? It is. Who owns it? The Adams County it. government. Adams, the Adams County government. Oh, I forgot about his name. Wasn't he? Didn't he run for president? No, he's not a person. It's the public. What the f is wrong with you people? Sir? No justice. No peace. No peace. You've been asked to leave the property. Yeah. You are now committing trespassing. Okay? That, that's all we're asking you to do is to leave the property. I need your card. I will give you my information okay. when we're done. No, you're okay. Me now. Uh no. Yeah, I will give it to you when we're done. Before you take any it's official uh, action. It's Let Officer Dickey, report. right here. That's what your thing Badge says. number two nine zero five. Okay. So Mr. Dickey, why are you removing it's Officer me from Dickey. public property? No, it's Mr. Dickey. I'm removing you from private property because you were asked to leave property. this property. Yes. Do you see any posted signs? Confusion arises, and the group questions the ownership. Tensions rise as they refuse to leave the property. Officer Dickey requests their identification, hoping to issue a summons. No no Gentlemen, I need your. No I need your. Peace. I need your ID, please, so I can write you a summons. You will be willing to write me a summons? Yes. Outstanding. I need your ID also, please, sir. Okay, I'm going to place you under arrest then. You are not placing me under arrest. You have no right to ask for anything. The situation escalates quickly, and another officer steps in with a taser. Chaos erupts as the taser is deployed, leading to an arrest for trespassing and disorderly conduct. In the end, the group insists it's not trespassing, but Officer Dickey maintains they were asked to leave the property. When he's in front of the business, yelling for everybody. Do you see this sign? It says cops. You want to know why? Because cops like you keep And he refused to give me his ID, which he's required to do. For why? So I could issue him a citation for trespassing. It's not trespassing. They, they, they kicked him out of the property. The situation leaves everyone wondering how it got so out of hand. Police received an urgent call for help as a driver spoke to a 911 operator. The driver explained that someone in a white pickup truck wearing a suit was trying to pull him over. He got annoyed, gave the rude finger gesture, 
and the man in the pickup truck turned on flashing lights and sirens. It's a white pickup truck, and the guy's wearing a suit. And he brake checked me, and I went around him on the right side, gave him the finger, and he turned all these lights and sirens on. Moments later, the man in the white truck pointed a scary weapon at the driver. The driver was asked if he had ID, and they planned to resolve things in a parking lot. Do you have your ID with you? And then we're going to move up in this yes, parking lot and get this ID. figured out. An officer soon realized that the man with the weapon was Texas Ranger Michael Smith, driving an unmarked truck. I want the director of DPS down here to talk to this guy. He doesn't he deserve to be doing that. And then when I ask him who he is, he, all I see is a shaking, and I'm like this. So what happened? The driver, named David Van Curen, was upset and wanted to speak to the ranger's boss. He believed the ranger had no right to act that way. Goes around me, flies around me real fast. Okay. Shoots me the bird. Okay. And this house was my truck. Get out of the truck. I demand to get out. Okay. He puts the car in reverse. Ranger Smith claimed the driver almost hit his truck, but the 911 call had proof that Ranger Smith drew his weapon first. He's getting out of the car now. He's got his drawn and he has no badge. At the scene, Ranger Smith changed his story and admitted the driver didn't really hit him. The driver only realized the man was an officer when he saw the weapon in his face. Tell me what you want, though. Man, I want him sighted, but there's nothing good to sight for. for. Yep. Besides, yeah. good sight for. Yeah. You know, he didn't strike my vehicle. I took a little base back to missing. Okay. Did he cross the line when he did that? I don't think he did, no. Okay. At what point did you realize that this guy was an officer? When he was right next to my window with his in my face. And I said, are you crazy? Who are you? Okay. And he said, oh, but the PS Ranger. And I'm like. It later turned out that Ranger Smith faced consequences for his actions, though further questions remained unanswered by the DPS. In New Jersey, on a day back in 2018, a concerned citizen noticed a black Chevrolet truck behaving recklessly. They called the police to report it. The truck was speeding and driving in a dangerous way, almost causing accidents. The police received the call and decided to intervene. They approached the driver, a man named John, who seemed to be intoxicated. They asked him to step out of the vehicle to ensure his safety and that of others. ALT, so we had the erratic driver call on you. I just knew she's had some observation. We have to handle this like anything else. He's going to ask you to step out. We already talked to Lieutenant Frioli. All right. He's, he's going to he's going to make sure you're safe to operate the vehicle. Okay? I just drive half a mile. I understand, but everything's recorded now, sir. You know that we got to handle it how we have to handle it. Yeah. It's. Trust us, we don't want to be put in this position either. Again. John was clearly upset, but complied with the officer's instructions. They tried to calm him down and understand the situation. They even considered finding someone to drive John's truck home, but it didn't work out. Is it urgent? Just stand by now. I'll give you a call when I get clear. We're starting to drive by LT. Let's get you out of here, okay? Can, we, can, you, can you come with us? Yeah. Okay. Let's go in the back of Mike's car. We'll get you out of here. Yeah. Make sure you know you're what? safe. I, What's up? I can't let you get in the car. You know that. Well, then you drive it. Well, if you have someone on scene, we can get it. I see Mr. Eccles here. We can, Yo, we can try to get him to... Drive my truck home, please. 
His keys are in it. We'll, we'll handle that, LT. We'll handle that. All right. Do front and search him. Okay. Hang on. Don't put him in the back. I'm saying you can cuff him in the front. Hey, Rob. Hey. What can I do, man? Not much any of us can do, unfortunately. Oh, we can't do that, Mike. Yeah, just, just do me a favor and hang tight, all right? Finally, they had to arrest John for driving under the influence, as his blood alcohol level was very high. His license was revoked and he faced legal consequences. LT, you know you can't do that, sir. We can't have you in the front seat. I can't have you in the front seat. We're not going to cuff you in the back, okay? We're, we're going to do it in the front, all right? Are you serious? Yeah, sir, you understand this. You would hate to be in our position, too. John, John, please, please, John, please, John. I don't... John, we, please. We'll get you the help you need. Let's just... Come on. You know we don't want to do this to you. All right, well, we got to get you. We got to, we got to, we got to get this process up. People are starting to come. We're all going to get... You know what? You know what? Other people John, respond out here. You. Sir, I would like just, you... Just This is me. what's going to happen. We're going to get you behind this door so no one sees. Mike's going to put the cuffs on you in the... No, no, there's no cuffs. The officers handled the situation with care, even though it was challenging for everyone involved. In a small town, a citizen encountered an official in uniform. The official wanted to see the citizen's ID, fearing a connection to someone else. The citizen questioned if they had committed a crime, but received no clear answer. I just want to check your ID, make sure you're not related to this. Uh, I, don't, I already told you, I don't know that girl. Okay, do you have your ID? Sir, uh, am I, have I committed a crime? I don't know. I don't know if you're related to this person or not. I already told you for a third time, I'm not. Okay. You the citizen believed in their right to be present and record events, citing their First Amendment right. The official, however, insisted on seeing the ID until they could determine any connections. You have your ID on you? Sir, I, I invoke and refuse to waive my Fourth Amendment right. I have every right to be here. I have every right to video record and take pictures of everything here. I understand that, but until I figure out who that person is and who you are... That has nothing to do with me, sir. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. I don't know that person. Fourth time telling you. Then why are you videoing them? Because I have every... It's my First Amendment right, sir. My First Amendment right, and I invoke and refuse to waive all my rights. Do you have your ID? Sir, have I committed a crime? I don't know. Okay. I'm trying to figure so, that out. Have a good night, sir. Okay. The citizen refused, asserting their rights. They asked for the official's name and badge number as required by the CMPD policy, but the official declined to provide this information. What's your name and badge number? What's your name and badge number? That's nice. Huh? That's nice. What is your name and badge number? A public official in uniform must ID themselves upon request. It's all on my uniform, sir. I can't you're see. To get it from me. I'm, a, I'm asking you, what's your name and badge number? So you refuse to identify yourself? Yeah, if you don't want to give okay. me your ID, I don't need to I'm not a public name. official. I don't have to. You're you a, read. It's right I, here. I can't see it, sir. I'm no, asking I'm you. Sorry. So you refuse to identify yourself right now. You. And it's your policy, it's CMPD's policy, I'm to identify policy. yourself upon request. You work for CMPD. That's nice. So it's your, the policy, to identify yourself. In the end, the citizen drove away, leaving the situation unresolved. Two officers make a big mistake by racially profiling an off-duty FBI agent. The situation escalates as the agent asserts his innocence, but the officers are adamant. They believe he's the wrong person and try to take him away. The agent stands his ground, refusing to be arrested. Why are you arresting me? You're assuming I'm someone I'm not. Okay, if you're not, then... No, 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 no. I'm free to go, okay? Us. Am I being detained? Yeah, you are. For what? Because I think you have more. You think? Yeah. That's an illusion. That's, that's okay. an illusion. You think? Stand up your hands. I'm not here. For what? I don't have hey, a horse. Oh, you're, 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 you're very wrong. wrong. Oh, okay, you're wrong. wrong. No, no, you are wrong. What do you mean if you're wrong? You're wrong. You're wrong. We're not going to play this game. Hold on. No, no, no. Hold on. 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 Hold
you guys are not gonna try to manhandle me first of all. I'm not under arrest. I didn't do nothing. No, no, no. If you got the wrong guy, I'm shooting all of you guys. I'm not standing up front. Listen, I'm not under arrest. I don't have a warrant. I don't have any. Matter of fact, matter of fact, look at my ID. He got the wrong guy, I'm telling you. You guys don't got the wrong guy. You guys are stupid. That's not you. You guys are racial profile thinking I'm somebody. Take them, take hey, them sir. cuffs off. Sir. I got them. Take them cuffs off. I'll take both of you right now. I'll take both of you right now. Take the cuffs off. Take the cuffs off. For me, y'all got this stupid, man. You guys are dumb. They want to get tough. Grab his you are stupid. I don't know how you hey, became yo, a cop. The... My ID's in my back pocket. Y'all got the watch, wrong. Hey, watch, funny how, watch how funny this is. Look at it. Oh, what does that say? What does that say? Oh. Wrong guy. Oh. Wrong guy. Oh, my God. No, get the off me, dude. Get, get off me, dude. I need your cars. I need your supervisor over here. Call your supervisor. Call your supervisor. Call your supervisor, Call your supervisor over here. What the is wrong with you guys? Tensions rise as the agent challenges the officers, who are now caught in a difficult situation. In a quiet neighborhood, a man with a camera faces unexpected trouble. He's recording everything around him, including a kid. Out of the blue, a club member confronts him, demanding answers. How are we doing? How are we doing? Your contact is non-consensual, sir. Um, do you see those lights? This isn't consensual. So. I'm stopping you because you're filming the kid, okay? I understand that you have an issue with law enforcement. I understand that you're trying to film me, but in the process of you filming- Do you understand me, that this is public? Let me finish real quick. In the process of me filming- Am I being detained? You filming me- Am I being detained? Do you see these lights? So does that mean I'm being detained? You are being detained right now. Why what reasonable suspicion, articulable suspicion- filming a child. That is why, and I was trying to explain that to you. But you want to interrupt me just to ask So am I under arrest? Are you going to arrest me for filming the child, sir? All right. In public? The man stays calm, asking if he's being held against his will. The club member's words stumble, and he can't explain why he stopped the man. Listen. I don't need to listen to your shit. Your contact is non-consensual. You, you can't ask me a question and then not allow me to answer it. Like, how? why would you ask the question if you're not going to let me answer? Why? Why even ask the question then? Does that make sense? Does that make sense to ask a question and then not allow anybody to answer? Okay. So, just so you understand, since I didn't get a say when I initially started talking to you, I understand that you are filming. You are free to film. I have no issue with that. We are on public property. I have no issue with that. Just so you know, I am filming as well. Okay? Body cam for video and audio. All right? So, the reason I'm coming over to talk with you is because you are filming a child. I understand that you like to film us and make sure that we are doing our job correctly and proficiently. I understand that. I have no issue with that. But in the process of you filming me, you're filming a child, okay? Of all the different interactions that you've had with law enforcement, that was that is the reason I came over here to speak with you, okay? Do you understand that? Soon, a supervisor arrives seeking to clarify the situation. The man insists he's only filming the officer, not the kid. Tensions rise as accusations fly. So this is my supervisor. So I stepped out with him because he's filming a juvenile. So what? I stepped out with him because he's filming a juvenile. He detained me is what yes, he meant he to say. That's why the lights are on. No, he detained no, me, sir. Him. I'm investigating, trying to find out why he is filming a child. Eventually, the supervisor sets the man free, but not before some heated words are exchanged. This unusual encounter leaves a bitter taste in everyone's mouth and it's clear that the officer wants to forget it as soon as possible. And you're his supervisor? He's not. And is filming a child in public illegal, sir? Filming a child? Why are you filming a child? I was filming your officer here, but he claims that I was filming a child. All right. I said that. I stayed with that. What do you mean, just be gone? He detained me illegally, sir. You're not detained. You can go. He detained me, sir. Am I am I being detained, Mr. He's Horton? He's undetaining you. Yes. So I don't understand go, why. Okay. So I'm free to go and I'm free to stay. You, Officer Horton, you piece of Thank you. You come back. Thank you. You just illegally detained me. Do you understand what you did, sir? I did. You not. scumbag, He's blue line trumping. thug. He's Do you understand what you just did? Up. You illegally detained me for filming a child, sir. What the is wrong with you?
In the end, a simple filming adventure turned into an unexpected drama in the neighborhood streets. In a quiet town, a man with a camera began wandering around. He decided to film the police department, which caught the attention of the officers on duty. They were puzzled by his actions and questioned him about it. Not much, just walking around. Videotaping the police department's not a good idea. Why? You guys are friendly people. We are, but why are we doing this? Why wouldn't we? Because it's a security issue for us. Is it? It is. I don't think so. It is. It's public property. It is public property, but when you start recording our perimeter and our gates and what our activities are, it's a, it's a concern to us. I've only been here for about 15 minutes. Right. We had officers that drove by and saw you pulling out of here, walking out of here, and said that you were recording them as they left. I did. The man, however, had no intention of explaining himself. He believed that he had the right to film public places without providing a reason. The officers insisted on identifying him, but he refused, claiming he had done nothing wrong. And that's an issue. Why are we doing that? I don't have to have a reason. You don't have a reason? I don't have to have one. Okay. Do you have a driver's license? I can see. I don't. What is your name? I'm not going to give that to you. You're not going to give it to me? No. Why would I give it to you? I haven't done anything wrong. Well, you're recording our property. You're recording okay. our building. Sure. And it's a security issue for us. Am I being detained? You are. Okay. Until I can get you identified. And what's your reasonable, Because I want to make sure that you're not suspicion. doing something that's a problem for our law enforcement community. So in order to detain somebody, you have to have a law that you're investigating, correct? So which I'm, law are you, what, what law do you suspect me of breaking? Are you looking to create a problem here for us? Or no, what, what not at all. I'm being polite and cordial. I'm, I'm being polite and cordial too. So I'm asking well, you're being for a little difficult. so we can identify you. I don't and, need to. And be on our way. Why would I need to identify myself? Because I'm asking you to identify yourself. What's your name and badge number? My name is Todd Hines. My badge number is 200. Okay. Your name and badge we're number? We're recording you just like you're recording. Good. Yeah, like okay, good. So. Okay. Well, I mean, I'd like to be on my way to go. The situation escalated until a sergeant arrived. The sergeant clarified that according to the First Amendment, the man had the right to record in public spaces. Since there was no apparent crime, the officers couldn't force him to reveal his identity. This gentleman's got a First Amendment right, he says, to videotape our activities around the police department and is refusing to identify himself so that we know who we're dealing with. Okay, you don't want to identify yourself? Well, you? I don't need to. He said he doesn't suspect me of a crime or anything. And I'm okay, just, I'm just asking. No, but no, sir, I'm I don't. Just asking. Okay, we're good. Let's go. Okay. Right. Have a nice My day. name's John, by the way. All right, John. Thanks. Take care, guys. Cooperation America. What's that? Sergeant, what was your uh, name and badge number? Sergeant name and badge number 239. Thank you, sir. You have a good day. Eventually, the man revealed his name as John, and the encounter ended peacefully, leaving everyone with an interesting story to share. Under the night's dark blanket, a group of officers approached an innocent citizen who had pulled over to enjoy a late night meal. Um, are, the spicy are, are we not being verbal? Yeah. Yeah, no, she, she does sound we're really just good. trying to have a conversation. Oh, we're not trying to yell at you guys. <laughs> What's going on? Today? I like the Burrito Supreme. It's it's it's. They're it's charging way. five bucks for that. Are they really? Thing now. Really? Sir, that must be that extra sir, sour cream. Either way, we just have a, a surface yeah, civil conversation, sour conversation cream, about this. Right. Yeah. I always add extra sour cream, so that puts it over five dollars. Yeah, really, it does. Mm -hmm. Just for one simple burrito that I can make at home for like fifty cents. Right. It's right. Crazy. It is crazy, totally insane. Gentlemen, can we can we have a conversation about what's going on? I just at least want to have a talk with you. The citizen's response surprised the officers as he calmly handled the situation. This video is about a retired officer. He used to flash his cruiser lights and wear a uniform that looked just like the cops. One day, he got pulled over for pretending to be a cop. The officer, Mr. Mackey, stops by and talks to the retired officer. All right, Mr. Mackey, here's your ID back. Thank you. Look, um, given with all the light and permit and stuff that I'm seeing, I'm just going to assume everything's properly permitted and stuff for the vehicle. It is, sir. Uh, that said, with what my chief's observation, you know, the use of those are for strictly business purposes. You, you, can't, right. you can't be using it to pull in the traffic, okay? Yes, sir. So I am going to issue a citation for unlawful operation for emergency vehicle, okay? Mr. Mackey notices the flashing lights and all the equipment in the car. He decides to assume everything's proper for the vehicle, but he tells the retired officer that those lights are only for real cops to use for their jobs, not for regular folks like him. 
Just, just here. Just I know, let me just talk to Chief real quick before, because I'm telling you how it's going to work. Even though I do this on my private side, once I get this ticket, GDOT is going to grind me again. I'm going to get grounded. And I try to, that's why I try to don't interfere my personal business with GDOT. Anytime they run our driver's license number, I'm going to get grounded. I'm pleased. I ask the chief, please. I hear, but you have to understand that this whole know, this whole scenario is a big issue for us too because no, the uniform no, and lights and all that. No, no, I this is when it no, gets. The thing is, this is my company. I run my company respectfully, okay? okay? Because I deal with high clients. This is my uniform. Not no me say officer. Nothing. This is my uniform. I got you. Mr. Mackey decides to give the retired officer a ticket for operating an emergency vehicle improperly. The retired officer is worried about getting grounded once again. He pleads to talk to the chief, but Mr. Mackey explains that the situation is a big problem for everyone. Please, I just want to talk to the chief. I know you're going to still do your job. I mean no harm. You can okay. check me, my badge number, 440, I run the express means. Just, just hear me out. I don't want to get if the, if, the, if the chief wants to argue, that's fine, but this is going to stand, all right? Just let me explain this. What I need you to do is sign here at the X. Signing is not in the mission. I know, I know okay. All right. I'm a former police in the Bahamas, I know. Okay. Do you need a pen? There yes, you go. Sir, please, if you if I go. Everything I point out to everyone else, auto-generated court date right now is showing for the 18th of August at 9 a.m. at our court. The address is right there on the back of your copy. This phone number right here is to the court services. It takes about three to five business days right, for the I citation. Know. Give them a call and they'll explain everything to you. Okay. Do you have any further? Do I have to attend the court? I just can pay it because I really... But once you contact that number, they'll tell you all your options if, uh, if you can just pay it outright and, and they'll explain your payment problem. In the end, the retired officer signs the ticket and is given a court date. Later on, it turns out he was actually pretending to be a cop and got arrested two days later. In this video, we meet some officers who made a mistake. They stopped state attorney Aramis because of her race, but they soon felt sorry. They checked her car's tag and it was okay. They hadn't seen a tag like that before. You, you gonna go? I'll stay here. Agency, you with? I'm the state attorney. Same thing. All right. Thank you. Your tag didn't come back. Never seen that before. Um, I'm sorry. Like yeah, we're good now. So it was. We ran the tag. It, I've never seen it before. A Florida tag. It's never come back to anything before. <clears throat> so that's the reason for the stop. What was the tag run for? I'm sorry. What was the, what was the tag run for? Oh, we run tags all the time. Whether it's a traffic light. They stopped her just because of the tag. They said they usually check tags for things like traffic lights. It was a misunderstanding, and they apologized. In this video, we meet Officer Oscar Mayorga, who appears to be in a troubling situation. He is found in his police uniform, visibly intoxicated and disoriented during the late hours. As Officer Mayorga's condition raises suspicions, the events continue to unfold. You don't have your poker with you? Uh, no, sir. No? Where's the thing you found? Um, you got some more than one. It's all good. He said uh, that his rifle's in the in the back. Uh -huh. Um, it was in the San Ponce when I talked to him. It was in a cup holder. It uh, it's no, not there. Some, uh, more than welcome. Uh, the arresting officer queries him about his work hours, to which he responds that he finished at 6.30. Officer Mayorga explains that he works night shifts, starting at 8.30 in the evening and ending at 6.30 in the morning. What time did you get off work today, man? Uh, what time did you get off work? Uh, 6.30. 6 yeah. What have you been doing? Uh, I, I got a poker suit. You got a poker suit? What time? Uh, four. What? Uh, 3, 4 a.m. 4 a.m.? You work night shift? Yeah, night shift. Uh, 8.30 at night, 6.30 in the morning. He is asked about his destination, mentioning something about residing near hot water. Despite their efforts to help, 
Officer Mayorga's condition deteriorates, and the officers on the scene try to prevent him from falling. Later, medical assistance is requested, but Officer Mayorga refuses it. Are you heading to work? Or where are you going? Yeah. Ah. You said you lived off of hot water. It's all good. I'm right here if you need a ear, if you need a lean. Hey, if you work nights, where are you going right now? I work, um... It's all good. I'll make sure you don't fall. It's all good. I'll make sure you don't fall. All right? I, 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 again, I'm told seizures. Here, you want to sit down? You want to sit down? Here, you can sit down in the grass if you want. Consequently, he is arrested for DWI due to his exceedingly high blood alcohol levels, which register at 0.39 and 0.385. His actions lead to him being charged with driving under the influence. The story closes with the observation that Officer Mayorga emanates a strong smell of alcohol and appears to be perspiring heavily, leaving questions surrounding his behavior. Hold on to our final clip which is the most scariest and creepiest one, and if you like what you saw, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our creepiest videos. In Williamson County, there was a deputy responding to a call about a girl who had supposedly faced domestic violence. She stood at the girl's door but the girl denied being a victim, insisting it was just a minor argument. The deputy noticed marks on her neck and asked about them, but the girl shrugged it off. She refused to cooperate, claiming she didn't want to deal with the deputy. So what happened? Nothing. Look up for me. What's on your neck? What happened? Nothing happened. So I have witnesses saying something happened. So are you trying to protect him? No, I just really don't like dealing with y'all. I really don't want to deal with y'all. I really don't. Okay. So... I don't need to talk to you, I really don't. Do you have your ID on you or anything? No, I don't. Frustrated, the deputy inquired about witnesses who had called the cops. Were y'all... I'm trying to figure out why your friends called the cops. What friend? Or your witnesses, whoever was over here that called us. Eventually, the truth came out. They had argued, but not physically. Okay. So what? We got, we got into an argument, okay. that's it, that's it. Like, okay. We, it was nothing physical? Nothing physical. Where are the marks on your neck from? We got into my necklace right here. No, this right here. What is that from? Mm, does it really matter? Yes. Does it? Make sure you're okay. I'm fine, ma'am. So I'm fine. Like literally, I'm fine. Okay. I get, I'm gonna be honest with you. I get a rash talking to y'all. I do not want to talk okay. to you, and especially Williamson County. Y'all have a really bad reputation. I've okay. bad encounters with y'all. I do not. I'm not gonna you. hurt you. I know you aren't. Ma okay. Really so we're just we need your cooperation. You. I know, and I'm. Do you want to press charges? I do not. Okay. No, I do not. Is there anyone else in the My apartment with you? Is here. Okay, can I talk to her? Yes. Okay. Wait, Do you want to no. go get? No, I really don't want you to talk. Okay. To well, if business. she wants to talk to me, that I can talk to her. Another cop arrived, and they questioned the girl further. Still, she resisted talking. Later, they discovered her sister in the apartment, and things calmed down. She's like, I don't even want y'all in my house. I'm like, well, we gotta find the guy that allegedly did this. So she didn't give direction, travel, description, anything. She's like, he left. I don't know where he went. Third level, Dickerson. So, we need to see if this guy's inside your apartment. Who else is in here? My sister. Um, no, I really don't. You really don't. This is track track! An investigation followed, and those involved in the excessive use of force were dismissed from the police force. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated with our latest videos.